Hallelujah. Well, Tang Tang, so that's good timing. So, um, yeah, Naomi, why don't you pray for us today? Yeah. Father, we love you, Lord. I just thank you for each one gathered here, Lord, and even the ones not gathered. Lord, I pray that you would, Lord, just begin to heal Elijah's body mm. and keep him away from sickness. Mm. Lord, and you would just bless the moons as they go and um, to the wedding today. Lord, I pray that you would just bless our time. <coughs> Lord, that you would just bless Emmanuel as he teaches, or that you would fill his heart with your wisdom and truth, mm. and that you would just bless each one here today listening, mm. and pray this in your name. Amen. Mm. Thank you, guys. Bless the Lord. So we have been um, talking about some glean from my understanding and experiences how to read the Bible, and suppose you can continue review those things, um, but let me do a snapshot of that. One is we read the Bible to understand God. There is one God, but the three persons. The Bible really is a guidebook on a map, even a testimony, to lead us into have a living relation with the Lord, am I? So, um, hold on. This is this is a new book for me. So remember, when the Pharisees come to challenge, he said, "What about the people when they resurrected? What happened to them?" Jesus uh, began to refute them. Said, "You don't understand the scriptures, nor the power of God." The power of God is not the supernatural power to do certain miracles. Obviously, we're talking about the, the powers that give you eternal life, and right, it's the powers that is going to uh, give them a, a, a the internal realities of life, a life living in a realm, in a reality. And uh, so then, the problem he identified is that the Bible become a little bit actually mislead them, right? Because the way they approach the Bible, uh, craft the idea, <coughs> doctrines, the Sadducees don't believe angels or resurrection. So they read only the book of Moses, and uh, I think uh, that some song, that's it. So I might be wrong with the details. The point is that they approach the, uh, the book with a word rigid and the scholarly scholastic approach with their mind and imagination rather than as this is later on identify you, you know God to, the, God to the living you know he was God to Abraham he was God to Jacob I'm sorry to Isaac God to Jacob so he engaged with you what we draw from that scripture is, is in a sense God won't have relationship with those who approach him. The scripture is given to facilitate a living relationship, you know, to say, that, oh, there is a people walk with me before. I want to walk with you the same way, you know. So when Jesus Christ came, that we is actually more fully opened. He more than opened the revelation, the action of the Holy Spirit. He gave us the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Before that, the spirit is the inference. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, in a sense, outside of you. Um, now, the spirit is a person. It's a seed of life. It begins to transform you into a spiritual man. Amen. Hallelujah. You can have a spirit as a friend, or you have a spirit as your own person who grew up in you. Amen. So, a different uh, thing. So, when Jesus went away in the past, or he said, some intimate um, um, testimonies about his relation with the Father. Then he comforted them with uh, um, this revelation that if he has to go back to the Father so the Holy Spirit, the counselor, the teacher can be given. Um, then we'll reveal the Father, reveal him to them. Now, that is after he told them, I have told you everything about the Father. You know, I have nothing. But you now, yet not only fully able to understand. When the Spirit comes, however, He will teach you all things. He will uh, make the thing that I told you real, basically, alive, right? So, 
the revelation of the Father, the Son, then it's not the perceptive knowledge or experiential knowledge. He object exists. He did this or that. That revelation again is inside of you, right? We will abide in you. And I'm on that note. So what that means that is internal life or the word of God, the word of God, become real to you. You know, um, therefore, the idea of wisdom from above is not just uh, some decoded or, you know, supernatural revelation, a visitation of a heaven, whatever, you know, encounter with angels. Those are needed, but the seals are like serving like the Holy Scriptures, and uh, rather they pointing to a source of life, the essence of life. The Peter saw the divine nature of God. Now we understand the basic purpose why scripture is given, and then look at the Jesus, then his assignments to the Holy Spirit, the function to teach us all things. We can see um, how to use the scriptures. You know, so I understand especially the New Testament, the the Holy Spirit functioning on a different regime, am right? So before then. The spirit carries you. You are taken over. Now, then, in the New Testament, yet the spirit still not only carries you, but the spirit also lives in you. So the mind of Christ is supposed to be transforming you into a different wisdom, different mindset. Am I right? Paul in the second Corinthians, first Corinthians two said so. Now. With um, that, I want to bring you to one scripture to uh, verify that. I'll go back for us. It's a diverse way to explain the same thing to you guys. So you understand I'm not talking about my own ideas in presenting this thing. It's just very evident. Evidently was presented and understood and leave it out by the apostles, especially all the people that you know, the Bible read about or being given authorship to make it into you. First Peter, come with me. Tom um, in ten said as to this salvation the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made a careful searches inquiries and there are good ones am i just not the ones like a pharisee or sadducees to build a school thought to build a religion out of their practices those are the real prophets a good example would be daniel understood the general minds of 40 70 years exile time am i so 11 so they're seeking to know what a person, all time, person, all time, the Spirit of Christ within them, that was within, is not a life-giving within, that is an anointing, an unction within, it makes sense to you? Now I understand that because I went through the two modes in extreme in my life, okay? When I was young, the Spirit will carry me would take over my faculties, take over my heart, my breath, my emotions, my words, my thoughts, my whatever is the word, the faculties <laughs> as a man. You know, I would speak in tongue, preach angels, I have no idea I was there, you know, so we not <laughs> to it. So, so that's he took over you. Some other time, he, he threw me around, you know, leaving my body and uh, rolling around on the floor like that and weeping crying sometime for seven days or, or so didn't sleep much didn't eat much and the spirit of god was with me you know the presence of the father hour over the ceilings watch over me and by the way you would like that story the little dog would uh, continue come to my bosom rest my bosom you know so <laughs> drive everybody crazy <laughs> The dog feel it, you know, feel the peace. So those are things, uh, I'm not to share those experiences to, 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 to exhort the experience I'm talking about. Those are things registered to you, a reference point 
that you understand the mood of the Holy Spirit come to you in different dimensions or different ways. That's called overtake you, okay? Carry you. Then I understand the word become flesh. I begin to learn God reveal the scriptures, begin to nurture me as a newborn baby, right? Repentance, faith, <coughs> growing in, in sonship. So there's there's a counsel of wisdom being to grow up in you. I used to have a lot of uh, um, supernatural abilities, you know, seeing vision, dream, dreams. When my emotion, my natural faculty are not settled, these days I don't have those things anymore. Not, not that and the person disappear on me. But I I meditate, I reflect, I've been, uh, in a sense, have the mind changed. You know, so then life, everyone around me, and everything I encounter begin to convert together, that I was like a, like a, like a ship or a boat in a river being carried. You know, you don't need to, to have a, um, a intense or emotional or situational based encounter with God, you rather you the life itself you live in carries you the presence of God, the evidence God's uh, flow is visible to you, making sense to you. You begin to understand what Jesus said: "The Father is with me. I'm not saying things of my own. Uh, I'm saying things what the Father want want me to say, what He wanted to say, and how to see it. So then you begin to preach or share things in a certain temperament or emotion or tunes, and sometimes you feel, oh my God, I just what I did, you know, what I did. Then you reflect, and the Spirit begins to show up, confirmation show up. You said you had to recoil from and said, oh, that's not me. You know, God is using me, you know, so how to deliver a message. I might not know why he did that, you know, so, but uh, he know it. He, he is doing a work. Um, that is obviously sometimes happen to our mess. But every time I would say 100% <laughs> chance happened to when I begin to share messages with the Kenya brother sisters. Why? Because they were yearning for that inference, yearning to, to be touched by the Lord. Now, I'm not to put you guys down in this light. I'm talking about the, there's awareness, right? You've got to have awareness. Jesus and the Holy Spirit and anyone that is used by God, faith, agreement, but also a common a sense of that here God is going to work. God is through our fellowships with the Father, with the Son, not that we make it up, we expect the Holy Spirit to work. We, our fellowship is holy unto God. That's why I have been continuing to strike it down, said that when you're learning the Bible with others, don't let anybody cheapen the experience for you, especially yourself. Have expectation God is going to do something, he, and He will do something. I'll tell you, in many times I go to a Bible study. And the teacher's teaching thing absolutely does not agreeable to me. Actually, they teach the things wrong. I look at it. They don't know what they're talking about. But I was there to question God. I was there to learn God. And God will use that experience I mean, to teach me. You know, people not teach the right thing or with the wrong attitudes. The Holy Spirit will tell you they're not teaching right. See, not teaching all with the, with the right attitudes. And I will be aware of it. And I was not criticize people, just and said, okay, you have a negative, but what's the positive? So why am I here? Lord, if that is wrong, what is the right thing? Can you show me? If the man is delivering with a, you know, unholy way or whatever way, I mean, okay, can I learn to deliver a better way? When I can learn, I have a bad example, what is the right way then? So you learn what and how by experiencing things. A total negative experience because your heart is right, your intent is right, you are searching God, and God can use that uh, negative experiences totally trans transfer to a different usage for you, am I? It's positive to you.
Amen. Hallelujah. I went to so many circles, Christians. Most don't know what they are doing. No one had a vision about that, so let me <laughs> not as you criticize people. Noah's vision was that chicken, well, in the beginning have a head as a doll, right? So I don't know quite remember. Appear like a doll, but have chicken head, something like that. Then later on, the head is lost. What that means? <coughs> that means believers functioning, thinking they are dolls in the Holy Spirit, but their mind is a chicken. That it means earthly. A, a low bird, and my chicken in this case, I believe, is on transform mind. At least not the spirit, am I? Not the Holy Spirit. Does that mean they teach the wrong things or teach the wrong thing? But God wants us to have a dove, to be a dove, and to be a lion and a lamb and an eagle, am I? He wants us to have those attributes of the Holy Spirit or personality of the Holy Spirit in part to us. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm just using again personal experience to tell you. Uh, that you learn the scripture when it's something you come with a reverential heart, expecting heart, want God to teach you through experiences, it's never a waste. But uh, fundamentally, you have to say, like I was, even I don't know what I'm doing, and not naturally engaging that, not only with awareness, but I know when I open a book with any teacher, the book is holy to me. You know, maybe to them, it's something else. But uh, because my encounter with God started within the book, it become a different book to me. Therefore, when, when I read the book, whatever their approach it does not change my attitude or reverence to, to the Holy Scriptures, am I? So, make it sense to you guys, you know, so I understand that man will make no use of the book or even misuse the book, but it doesn't deny the book is real. And God is going to use it for me. And I need to make sure my attitude approach it is not changed by any external influences. Amen. Hallelujah. So that thing, decide by yourself. Decide by yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what I'm registered. So that being said, we see when the Holy Spirit is giving her, the Spirit is that one dimension. One person is doing the own thing. I begin to share the Holy Spirit has different roles. He impart different facets or different flows, different engagements. Here. Well, just like look and uh, let's see, Kayla. Kayla is uh, a young lady. Uh, she has many roles in life, in many engagements, am I? So she, we all say, oh, that's Kayla. Actually, we think Kayla in the holistic way, am I? Through different realm of dimensions of her life. You said, oh, that's Kayla. You don't just say, oh, it's a picture, that's a Kayla. Because I see her food, I know that lady. That's not knowing her. Yes, you know the face, you know her, all of her looks. You even like her because of her looks. But unless you know her in every life, in different realm of engagement, and study her, then you really don't know her, am I? So, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> I mean, it's different than the picture now. You know, she is a living person. Now let's see, she will be a friend to others. She will be a sister to others. She will be a daughter to somebody. <laughs> Big sister, am I, to somebody. She will be um, a, a servant, you know, in the house of the Lord. <coughs> she will be a, one of the workers in a, in a certain setting, amen. She will be a teacher, teach somebody doing something. Just think about the Kayla's life seems very simple. And uh, some would say that's where boring life is. Joking with you, okay? So, <laughs> actually, it's a very rich life. Each realm, she plays a role that is uniquely to her. And uh, unless we know those things, how she carry herself in those dimensions, I don't know her. I mean, I need to know her in order to really be friends with her. I want to know those things, am I? Make it sense to you? So, so you think, how do you know the Holy Spirit? You need to know how the Holy Spirit has different roles, different functions. Even it's one person, he's not one dimensional, he's multi dimensional. And the scripture clearly tells us it's the seven spirits of God. So, we need to study what those seven spirits mean. What the seven spirits are they independent, of, just like a picture again, or they are personalities? 
in function, in flow. The Bible clearly said, because the word of God is wisdom from above, the Holy Spirit is intended to teach us or impart that wisdom to us. Therefore, the Holy Spirit engaged or added to it in our life as a recipient of his person and his wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. He's going to open up those seven channels or seven for sets engagements with you. And as a living spoke about this, so, but the starting point is the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. I just tell you, I continue to emphasize, you don't open the Bible with a casual attitude. You don't come to a Bible study with some uh, meaningful person teaching you with a casual attitude. It's a forbidden, not forbidden because of something required externally for you. But in your heart, you understand, that's offensive to God. That is offensive to the Holy Spirit. So don't expect God to do something for you. Holy Spirit will leave you alone if He's not going to actually make your life hard. Amen. Hallelujah. God is not just, okay, don't do anything, right? He disciplines you. He cracks you. He even rebuke you. He even punish you. Amen. He even judge you. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a living God. Those who are blessed, revering Him, will be blessed. He favors you. Uh, those who don't respect him, dishonor him, he disfavors you. He disqualifies you. He judges you. Expels you. He makes your life very miserable. And the Israelites have that, right? Exiles, whatever. Defeats, disarrays life. You know? Naomi, you remember the story, Naomi? <laughs> she said, My life is bitter. <laughs> <So> <laughs> You see my point? Yeah. That's Naomi's life. <laughs> Thank God, did something. Right? So, oh, my life is sweet. <laughs> sweet like a honey. Something changed. Something changed. So that being said, so I mentioned the seven spirits. Then you see this pattern. This is enough. You see this pattern, we would think it's only internal pattern, as much as a personal relationship. But actually, it's a pattern of God's divine garment or design in the age of man, the cosmos of man, okay? So you see this, he, he has his dimension, the dimension that is belong to Christ Jesus, the fellowship we're supposed to enter, some shape as a family. Then in grew up, right? Then the seven ages of man through time, you know? And um, I'm stalking. Uh, so that's huge design. I mean, that's seriously design. Actually, in man's realm, you will see from the seven levels. Seven levels, okay? Fear, whatever. <laughs> Ground, okay. But I don't want to expound those details because it's like redundant. Um, but eventually, however, I did talk to you. If the timeline, the spiritual realm is set in this motion, but it also works in time, and God is the beginning and the end. So in time life, map it up human history, there's a progressive fulfillment, the increase of government. So he's a chosen people. So it's a chosen people. And if you are in a certain time frame, you belong to a certain age, and he chooses you as the chosen people, you understand what is up to, to your age. Now most Christians don't have an idea. They're going to speculate, ecologies, whatever. They never have divine revelations. Now we are different. Because we have the revelations. I'm talking to you, I saw it. God gave to me, sent to me actually, to be part of this work. Now, that is different understanding, different point of view to examine the scripture with you, to understand God's overall work in your life. Not every teacher can do that. They can be an observer, studier, they can, you know, maybe they have accurate in the preaching of the Bible, but not everybody, like a Paul, like a Jesus, said, hey, this is what God told you going to happen in my life. This is what God is going to do in our age, in our generation. I hope that's not exhorting myself, per se, but uh, you guys can pray. I encourage you to pray. Why you are here to study the Bible? I pray with a sincere, with a sincere prayer, because that will matter to you. Let me explain why I matter to you. I want to strike this message to you. And Jesus the priest of the gospel will teach people. But not many are able to learn from him. Is that the same dimension? 
for some same dynamic we're gonna play out in here for sure it will. What what do you think? I mean hallelujah. And that means I'm uh, uh, try to equate myself with Jesus. But I try to equate yourself with the disciples <laughs> or the audience of Jesus, you know, so it's a face. So you have Again, if I'm a bad teacher, you should, but it doesn't limit you the possibility to be a good student. Am I? Hallelujah. So in examining your way, approaching the Holy Scriptures. Amen? Hallelujah. By the measure you measure him, Jesus said, will be measured back to you. That's always a principle in terms of learning from somebody. Okay? If you, the students, when you're young, and you, per, I'm not saying you're prideful, it's just your world, your level is too small. I mean, your, 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 your world too small, your level too low. <laughs> you really not possible for you, incapable for you to understand the one next to you might have a lot to offer. You know, the levels, the depth is, the, the we use, and those things, is not scholarly or academic or translating to word sentences. It's a, it's a profoundly is in life itself. We call the counsel, we call the, the Bible, we call the understanding, we call the knowledge, we call the wisdom, we call the power. Amen. Hallelujah. Let some may identify this because I open up a different dimension for you. So. You don't want to learn a person from me and they carry away with the topic. Then you lost everything. You don't mean nothing. If I had to write a topic, I could do a book, am I? Person in a book. I can give you the system teaching. It doesn't help you. So let me see the same thing. Okay, we're talking about inference or grace. Now you have cans, you have a dog, am I? Certain dog listen to you, certain dog don't listen to you, am I? you have a relationship with them. But eventually they have to respect you, you, you you're their master in the, in the house. I mean, they don't listen to you, but in general you really agree, you can call the dog, discipline the dog, you have the right to do it, right? So it makes sense to you. And nobody said, no, I mean, just treat the dog badly. If you, the dog acting out, you try to discipline him, right? Well, that's perspective now. But if you do that, with uh, somebody else dog. You didn't have can. You did that. And it, would that be infected if you don't have a solid relation with your Ling and uh, her cat? <laughs> First, it doesn't work, am I? Make sense to you? Doesn't work, okay. Second, it's out of place, am I? If you try to accomplish, say, that, hey, I want you to, you didn't cat to behave in certain ways, why don't you like my cat? You know, so that's a presumption. You know, a relationship, a cat don't know you. Especially your the, the cat is just because the cat is not acting like your cat. That's a false expectation, right? Presumptuous thinking. So that way, you said, "Oh, that's not good cat," because my cat acting this way. You the cat don't listen to me, therefore doesn't acting this way, while she's. Maybe a perfect can for you. It's not for you. So you generalize in your limited experience. Try to identify them. Your self-centered way of thinking. By the measure you measure that can. You just limit the real knowledge of can. And because you prejudge a cat, says so that's a bad can. You might have even have an opinion about Elaine, her relation, her understanding, her relation with Kant. Maybe in reality, Elaine have better way approaching Kant, <laughs> reason out the Kant than you. You can learn a lot from Elaine, but because you prejudged the Kant based on your experience with your Kant, you write Elaine off as one can help you to have a good relation can. Am I trying to get it somewhere? Okay. So is your approaching spiritual things. Simple like that. Because you prejudge, you continue prejudge, continue unwilling to listen. Let those who hear have a year to listen. 
that you continue to judge with the UT lettering of yourself. You actually eventually become your own God. That's what God hate. That not God hate in the sense of we him in the that he despise his word. Because there's no fear of the Lord in that. You're not approaching something, say like, Lord, can you teach me something? Can you improve me? You say, God, okay, give me something. I want something. I need something. Else, uh, else, I'm not interested. I don't get involved. I'm not saying everything I do get involved, am I? But God said, okay, this is the occasion for you to learn from me, for you to stay the course through it, so that I can grow, be changed. Uh, Esther, can a man be changed? He decided he's uh, all right. There's nothing to be changed. <laughs> so you and your students, what a student in the proposition what it means to be a student? Let me ask you that question, okay? It's simple. What kind of students you want to be? A student's information? Or the student for life change. Especially you learn the Bible, my right? entire in spiritual occasions, right? So obviously you are students because something could change you. You will be changed. So the proposition be a spiritual environment, learning spiritual things, receiving life counsel, the proposition is that you should know it will eventually you're gonna change. Amen? Hallelujah. You come here for change. So, before you sign on this kind of things, knowing change is what you desired, <laughs> exciting to you. It's proved that fellowship you have is fruitful, is productive, it's, a, it's working. Now, if you have a proposition saying, no, I just gonna have a good time, learn some good things, and, but you know what? I'm not gonna change a lot. Nobody's supposed to tell me how to change myself. Well, this is made by the major, you measure the fellowship, measures the experience, raises the time, it measures back to you. Because then you say, oh my God, somebody <coughs> changes. Oh God, expect me to change. You naturally going to say, no, I don't need it. If things happen, you will say, oh my God, it sounds so uncomfortable. This is going to be? This is terrible. Amen? Hallelujah. Therefore, you sign on a spiritual experiences, spiritual education, with a, a wrong vision, with the wrong perspective to begin with. But if God is going to work in your life through any solid and meaningful, productive experiences, like a teaching fellowship, ended up you're going to be improved, sanctified, changed, right? filled up, enlightened. Improved, established, glorified, justified, sanctified, glorified. Each one means you will be changed. You change from glory to glory, grace to grace, face to face, wisdom to wisdom. So you should have teachers. I will break some. We're foolish, youthful, about it. We're much endorsed, exhorted up by a foolish Christianity we call a good Christianity. Some actually deep-rooted in your parents, your grandparents' mindsets. They don't expect you to change in fellowships. They expect you somehow, someday, something will happen to you. They don't understand there are cultural and God, governmental God's way to change you. It is not up to you to be changed. You have to enlist yourself for change. And that change is a profound important to your life. Also, it's a gift to you. It's not to be cheapened as if it was something you pick up on the roadside. You're supposed to be a plant in the garden to be fruitful. Somebody is going to cut off the false branches from your vine if you're not grow right. Some going to clean up the land, the thorns around you, if we chalk you out. 
So you need to learn those things. So a deep-seated popular Christianity said, no, that's control. That's an overstep. That's whatever. Oppressive. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's leave the chosen in our life to the whims of the world, to the whims themselves. Like a jungle. Go out of the jungle and find something. Find something. They never teach you what it means to build a beautiful garden homestead. They themselves survive a jungle. They may have some food, hunt some games, and they were proud of it. We will give you two different ways of approaching Christian walk or spiritual life. As it says, hey, yeah, God is going to give you an animal. God is going to give you a bush of fruits. You usually find it. They never really seriously think about, oh my God, there's a land can be cleaned up. Be an inheritance to me, a beautiful land to me, full of milk and honey. I can start a life of garden, am I? You can safeguard this place with fences or watchtowers, and so foxes or wild animals can never come in. That's not God's intention for His people. God never intended for His people. To go to the wilderness to find some, uh, uh, you know, survival. <laughs> You're supposed to build a life, a blessed land full of milk, honey, and then you can pass on to the next generation. So what I'm talking about you is that there are certain people who are very poor in the Lord. They never taste the real economy of the Lord. The, the literally never have the real inheritance in the Lord. It's a slave mentality. Do you understand the difference? Huge difference. But you are called to be sons. Sons started with the father's land. Candid acquainted with the father's business in the land. So waiting for the time the land is given to you. Now I'm talking about the natural things. I'm talking about the spiritual inheritance. No, you pray for us. I'm going to wrap up here. The difference, that's what Jesus difference, Paul's difference, Peter difference. When they begin to teach, they instantly know they were teaching a substance, an economy, a kingdom different than all the teachers before them. Give me the list. David, Moses, Abraham, all of them, right? <laughs> Elijah, the prophet, John the Baptist. Why? Because they never had this spiritual inheritance. <coughs> they never had it. God never graced them to raise up a family, raise up a, a household, raise up a garden in, in that light. But not Jesus. Jesus said, I will give you inheritance. I will make you be a new creation of life in this New, new inheritance creation, uh, new, new creation inheritance. Amen. Hala, go ahead and over pray for us. Then we'll move on. Yes, Lord, I do pray that you would enable us to even experience this ourselves, Father. Lord, to to see the shortcomings of, Lord, uh, what today uh, is considered Christianity, Lord, which is rather something that is uh is lowly and Lord and is is base Lord and does not really have anything to do with uh, your culture or your kingdom Lord those who would expect that you would change your ways Lord unto the ideas of man Lord but indeed it is the complete opposite truth Lord we are the ones to change our ways Lord and become familiar with yours and Lord this even requires, Lord, with uh, in necessity, Lord, that we repent, Lord, of the ways of this world or the ways of the flesh, or to to take an about face, Lord, and walk upon a new path. And so, Lord, I do pray that we would have um, the the hearts and minds to be able to determine this difference between the the broad and seemingly welcoming path of this world, Lord, and the 
truly narrow path of your way, Lord, of understanding um, the truth of your kingdom. And so, Lord, I do ask that, Lord, we would even put this into practice in our engagement in such times as this, Lord, in which we have uh, a vessel appointed by you, Lord, to um, establish your truth and uphold your standard in the midst of, uh, in this case, Lord, uh, an overview of your written word, Father. Um, so, Lord, may we have uh, attentive hearts, Lord, which only come through uh, a true willingness and inspiration, Lord, to know and live out your word. Mm. And so I do pray these things in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Now turn with me again. We last time in Matthew, three chapter, we talked about John the Baptist, referring to 11th chapter, this is the own testimony, and in value to John's ministry or discipleship. Then we highlighted, Jesus said, when my teaching will produce a new breed of uh, believers. And he said, the least in my kingdom is greater than John the Baptist, which I, from a different uh, uh, way of thought, presented as ahead of this time. So now I want to, you look at the, in three chapter in seven, I'm going to do words succinctly to give 10 minute, 20 minutes to teach on three and the four chapter, even five maybe, uh, three and the four, uh, before the Sermon on the Mount, okay? So then we use the, the coming few sessions, we'll talk about the body with the teaching on the Sermon on the Mount. So let's look at this. So in seven said, who is coming to, for baptism? To be baptized by John, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Now I have footnotes here, just for your information. The Pharisees were a legalistic and separatist group who strictly but often hypocritically keep the law of Moses and the unwritten traditions of the elders. The Sadducees, seeing other scriptures, basically, you can study yourself what they are, okay? Lots of free information on those things. As I give a, a essence through these notes, were more worldly and political minded. What the Sadducees is, what about Christian today? I try to draw the parallel to you. What about Christian today? Most are Pharisees. A big portion are Sadducees. Worse than even those people under the regime of Roman rule. Do you understand the seriousness of this? So if Jesus come in RMS in today's world, he will say, you brood wipers. I don't, more than I don't know you. I think you're wicked. That's what he's going to talk about. Now why he called a, you brood wiper in the scripture said. A wiper is a snake, dangerous. But what does a snake do? Why is it dangerous? Your chosen wipers brood the chosen wipers. Why is he called you the wipers? You know, the snake bite the people in the wilderness in most of the time, right? So, they are poison, they are poison. So what he's saying is that the teachings are poisonous. Amen? How like the teachings of school of thoughts produce a very toxic elements in life. So, that he said, who had warned you flee from the rest to come? So worse of a judgment to God. Am I? So this is not something to trifle with. Oh, this is a political mind. It is okay. He still believe the Lord. He's still good. Jesus said, you, why are you so political minded? Because you are of the devil. So it's not a small thing. You don't want me. You want yourself. You want your own way. That's the truth of the matter. And you look at Jesus or John the Baptist. Do you think they're going to fellowship such people? Do you think they're going to have them around, hung around? Do you think they're going to have them teach the people that they exercise spiritual influences and leadership? No, you tell me. 
the first thing they will cut down. Am I right? Get out of here. Why I'm sent is for dismantling this very thing, to bring judgment against this very thing. They consider the number one enemy God's people, worse than Roman rulers. But we don't think like that today, Christians, am I right? Ah, uh, they're all brothers, they all believe in Jesus. When we talk like this, they said, You are divisive, you are unloving, uncommodating. The truth of the matter, they are divisive. They are very unloving because they don't love the Lord. They love themselves, love their ideas. They are uncommodating because they will persecute those who disagree with them. For the sense of superiority and sense of importance. They have no allegiance to the true ways of the Lord nor his kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So refuse to repent. What does he tell these people to do? What does John tell them to do? You need to put air to the roots of that bad tree and put the tree in the fire. That's what you need to do. Unless you do that, I'm not going to baptize you. <laughs> you have nothing to do with me. You're under the wrath of judgment gone. And this is the Bible. I'm not talking about other things. But we read the Bible differently, am I? We use our own context, read it with our own agenda, our own doctrine. We're not reading the real spirit behind the things. Why are people politically minded? Because they are worldly. Why is one the power in the world? Because one the power from the devil. Therefore, would you have mercy on such a thing? I think not. And you don't teach young people to quicken them with the starting point, the spiritual seed, the spiritual vision, spiritual future, then you are not a good teacher. Yourself deceived how you can influence teach young people. Yeah, you're disqualified, incapable. Misleading young people. Uh, we talk this way, I've been very sharp, straightforward. Actually, I'm very patient. But when the influence begins to overshadow you guys, begins to steal your purity and devotion to the Lord, what do you think God's leadership is to do? Because that's where the sword begins to come. Amen. Hallelujah. That's where the altar begins to reveal. That's a wrong altar. <laughs> this is God's altar. Now, then he talked about, he baptized us with a spirit of repentance. Am I? The baptism of repentance. Repent from what? A emotional upheaval because you've done wrong? Or repent into a different way of life? With that way of life, he said, John testified, he was baptized with the Holy Spirit and with the fire. I explained to you the two effects of this, especially the baptism of the water and by the fire. When we're talking about fire, fire consumes things, burns away things, destroys things. On the other side, fire purifies things, reveals the true substance for you. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, gold refined through fire 77 times before you beat into a holy vessel. So, but the fire is needed in our life. You need to cry for it. More than just have a, oh, the sense of burning in my body, you know, that sensation of things. But really, it's a holy process for you to be purified in the Lord, become a holy vessel unto Him. Amen, hallelujah. Your spirit is cleansed. Now, your body can be cleansed through the water, but your spirit needs to be cleansed through the fire. Amen, hallelujah. Is that making sense to you guys? Amen, hallelujah. Your body is in between. Amen. Your soul is in between. Amen, hallelujah. So what God is saying is that through this process, then you can be glorified as a real life of Christ Jesus. Now with that being said, John 
was able to baptize Jesus. We say this sign. Hallelujah. Let's look at this. He said in 16, uh, 316, after being baptized, Jesus came up in mid from the water, and behold, the heavens are open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning, lightning on him. Well, when Noah was six years old, one day, I don't think he remembered that experience well, very well, but one day he asked his dad, hey, I want to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So, you know, we, I was invited over dinner, prayed for him, and um, I don't quite remember the situation. Oh yeah, you guys came to my apartment, sitting then we have dinner together. So after dinner, during the dinner time, I said, no, why do you want to baptize in the Holy Spirit? No, a six year old said, I want to be a son of God. And nobody had told him about the son of God, those signs, we don't teach those topics. <laughs> Uh, it was a very interesting story. So later lead on why he in the sofa we began to pray him and he got drunk in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> he can't see in the sofa, you know. He's super quiet. No is uh, very active these days. <laughs> he never stopped moving these days. We're not energetic. And so he get it super quiet, you know. And his, his head ready to give you into the floor in the sofa. <laughs> so we had to hold him back. And he lost, he just literally out. And uh, me and the team waiting for him to come back to, to his awareness. He asked him, what, what happened to you? No, I still remember the vision you saw? You don't remember, I guess, yeah. Okay, I know, I remember very well. Because that it was a, a time the Lord teaching me about the battle of the Holy Spirit, what it means, a little bit. So, in the, so I was, I asked him what he saw, he saw, actually he saw he was traveling in the open heaven, our space, universe. You know, he don't travel between galaxies. <laughs> the second thing, he saw a dove fall upon him. And so for sure, because he was asking the Baptist the Holy Spirit, then he had this experience, and the visions open, but he did not speak in tongues. You see, those days, I think, because they were taught, people are supposed to speak in tongues when they're baptized. I know the innocent young lad, <laughs> and uh, God answered his prayer. But he was not able to speak in tongues. He got drunk in the Holy Spirit. You can't say he's not baptized in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I came back home. I was speaking the question, this uh, conventional statements from the Pentecostal Charismatic said about the Holy Spirit evidenced by speaking tongues. This is very encouraging on people, okay? I thought, no. No, that's not. For many reasons, because that's not how I entered the Holy Spirit. Second is that that's, that's just like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it's not in the scripture. I studied scripture by that time, I wrestled with the scripture. Now, I wrestled with it, but I would never have a, a clear understanding on this point. I don't want to venture to presume I know anything. But God sealed my understanding with no other experience. He said the bad of the Holy Spirit is not necessarily evidence, has to be evidenced by the speaking in tongues. Rather, it's open up your spiritual faculty, you can see. Amen, hallelujah, you can, you, can, you can see into the spiritual realm. Amen, hallelujah. Now, people would contend with me. Now, Noah's here, he's now, how old are you? 20 years old. <laughs> so 14 years later, I can draw that experience out to tell you, we're not lying. Now, I look at that scripture, I look at exactly examine the experiences here. This is a hand. As the Lord said, yeah, that was means baptized or born of the Holy Spirit. Am I making sense to you guys? You know, some of you may wrestle in your receiving the Holy Spirit, receive the band of the Holy Spirit. Now, it is a supernatural experience. You can't just say that mentally, I agree with it. I got baptized in the, in the waters of the Holy Spirit. That's ridiculous. Someone will teach like that. 
But it's foolish to teach like that. That means you're very blunt. If it's that, then why does scripture tell us it's different baptisms? Does the scripture continue to tell us that water baptism happened in Acts? And does the apostle come to them, to the midst of people get baptized in the, through the water in Christ? He said, hey, have you got to get baptized in the Holy Spirit or not? And this answer is no, we're not baptized in the Holy Spirit yet. So the apostle has to go there to what? Uh, to pray for them so they can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Make sense to you? So that's biblical. I want to share with you and I want to make a teaching on you. What I want to do is even go for you a desire to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The greater influence of the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Our mind is so small, sometimes so wicked, already. It's not good to learn God. But when you baptize the Holy Spirit, the Spirit opens up your mind, open enlighten your mind, am right? Your heart will be enlightened. The eyes you understand, the heart will be, that was me efficient, so. Uh, now me only write this one down and meditate on that, okay? But when you get the baptized of the Holy Spirit and you need to seek it, ask your seed, be passionate about it. There are certain things is worth the, a while the passion about. <coughs> that is the influence of the Holy Spirit, the activation, the Spirit in you. It don't have to be gifts, but it has to have a heart of understanding being part in you. Hallelujah. That's what I'm targeting at. Hallelujah. In, I think in Let's second chapter of Ephesians. I'm not sorry, first chapter of Ephesians. Said in 17, said he was a praying. So he said, uh, let's start 15. So I preface this. I, for this reason, too, I heard the faith of, in the Lord Jesus Christ, as your faith, which exists among you and your love for all the saints. Now that's a very beautiful description for a believer. Amen? Hallelujah. They love the Lord, they have faith. So they were healthy Christians. Not re ruthless or un <laughs> un orderly, disorderly Christians. Am I? Don't have father. Don't, don't walk in the right walk. Rather, they walk work decent, wonderful walk. Am I making sense here? They're, they're excellent Christians in a certain to a certain extent. For this reason, because they were such Christians, now me, this encouragement, because you were such one that the health faith in the Lord allows the sense, you have the right template. It's like a right vessel. I, I want you to be poured in. Amen? Unless your vessel is the right one, amen? Prepared one, clean, holy, and you're not ready to receive the substance that I poured you in. Making sense in Naomi? Amen. Hallelujah. So when I encourage you to receive the further things of the Holy Spirit, remember you have to make yourself a good vessel. And it's commendable to be an honorable vessel. Not everybody is a good vessel. Therefore, your prayer, intercession, reflection is then preparation for a spiritual vessel in you to receive the substance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. But let me ask you, Naomi. You are the perfect, good, and God bless you in the king's hand. The king's thirsty. He said, I want something to drink. Is that vessel going to do? Because it's a good vessel. Somebody has to pour something in, am I right? Then the king can enjoy it, am I right? Quench the thirst, whatever. So are you. You may be perfect in every way by your own usage, own character. But if God is going to use you, God is going to flow you, use you, or flow out of you, the profession of the vessel is not, by its own merit, good enough. In the attitude of flow, a man, God has to open that flow in you. The kingdom of God is in the giving and the receiving. 
the more you give, the more you receive. Amen. The more you receive, the more will be given to you. There's a flow. There's like an engine. Amen. It's a it's an engine. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you, you you're then talking about engine or airplane? Start very slow, you know, with small circulation. I don't quite know how engine works. Then begin to create this momentum. The other parts of the engine begin to activate. The other, the, 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 eventually, it becomes so loud, so powerful, it carry a great airplane. In, you know, can lift up tons and many, many tons. But it started very small, spark, little circulation. Amen. Begin to increase the power. Now, if you never sparked, never even started activate the Holy Spirit in you, believe me, it's only for yourself. It's only for your consumption. You know me, have you seen the lake? When the river flowing into never flow out, what that lake going to become? Do you think the river going to continue flowing that lake? You, you can't, right? Because the lake will not even go anywhere. It's just, that's all you got. By the way, when the rivers or the water stop flowing in, the life in the lake, what going to happen to life in the lake? Is the fish going to continue to survive? Or good fish, <laughs> or healthy fish? Or become a stink, am I? Stagnant, stink, life in and may die. You understand my point? Well, you may think I'm talking about redundant things or me, me just a person life for you. Uh, the truth of the matter, I see many creatures. Actually, in my evaluation, at least eighty percent Christians never found the joy of increase. The snack and poles, the stinky. <laughs> to say I have water, I have a, once a, upon a time God has blessed me with an overflow. They so ask them, what happened last year? What happened last month? What happened last week? Hmm? Not much. <laughs> Not much. Same old, same old. You are dead pond. You know what I mean? Then you talk to them because there's nothing to talk about. The new things gone, the things God is doing, it's all the old things, some sticking things. Doctrines to pick up, idea, experience to pick up. Pretty much have a sting to it. You know, the bread getting old, what is, what is it called? <laughs> Not fresh, not alive, smells. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, if I'm hungry, I can eat something, but I don't know whether it's going to poison me or not. Or at least not that tasty, fresh out of the oven. <laughs> if your spiritual life is like that, hmm, your personal spiritual walk like that, then you are in a dangerous place. Don't congratulate yourself, I'm with God, I'm with God. You're not. A sign of a, a, a growing spirit, a spiritual person, is always taken to be in touch with God, have experience with God, have interaction with the Holy Spirit, have evidence with the Holy Spirit. He has something new to say. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. And he learn and he'll give. Learn and give. Learn and give. In increasing measure and capacity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today you're raft. Tomorrow you're a boat. The other day you become a, a ship. The other day you become a container ship. Who knows? The next day you become an airplane. Who knows? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> but you change all the time. And changes are very evidence. Have a marker to it. Marker to it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is not saying God. Not start with one thing. That is your spirit understanding and be open up. Because the believers have such faith and love, then Paul said, Hey, this guy is ready. Lord, can you help them? So he began to pray. Let's do this. In fifteen now, Ephesians one fifteen. So the heard of the faith then 16 said, I do not say give things for you. I do the same because I heard a wonderful, amazing thing you guys are doing in the Lord. 
uh, true. I celebrate them every time we hear them. You know, uh, John, Tim, and I, the one I converse with, uh, we all have a smile in our heart, in our face. That's true, because we know our labor, our service bear fruits. You may have a great car. Who cares? I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not really exciting to me, <laughs> but you learn new wisdom, being touched by the Lord. That really cheer us up, am I? So, am I making sense to you? Yeah. So, let's see. So, now say the again, thank you, Father, making mention of you in my prayers. So we're praying for you. That is our prayer for you. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of what? Wisdom. Now, a spirit of wisdom. Oh my God, if it's a spirit of wisdom, is it you possess it or is it a gift to you? Amen? Hallelujah. Is that the spirit? You said, I got the baptized, I got the baptized Holy Spirit, therefore, do you think those believers don't get baptized by the water or spirit by this time? I'm surprised, <laughs> For sure they were. <laughs> they were with Paul. Ephesians was one of the most excellent church in those days. So why Paul said, now you are ready to receive for the things from the Spirit, not from Him, but from God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and then impartation of the Spirit. A Spirit of what? A power? Supernatural experiences? Abilities? No. A Spirit of what? Wisdom. Wisdom. And understanding. That means a come with nothing visible, essential, do you? Uh, nothing. In the natural. Nothing. In thing you can identify and say, hey, I got the uh, mood of the Holy Spirit. I got the <laughs> healing power. I got the prophecy. Nothing. Rather, somehow, a door is open to you. Somehow, your heart your ability, spiritual ability is suddenly changed. Wisdom is invisible. Wisdom cannot be qualified by the weak. The spirit of wisdom come to you. It doesn't come with a full blue, full substance, the fullness things. It's opened up something. Amen? It's like open up a river. Amen? Open up a flow. Amen? Hallelujah. Open up a flow. When you close your eyes, tell me. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Rather, let Yelin pray for you. Yelin, go ahead, lay hands on her. You see, knowledge and nothing. Understanding, map out scriptures, the good, wonderful efforts. But if it's a head knowledge, set of understanding, carry away, rather, change the real spiritual life in you. I'm not interested in changing this personality, this character, this this flow, this, this attitude. No, no, no. Those are symptoms, something. I'm sorry. A branch or something. But I want to change the roots. I want to change the substance in you. I want to change the inner man in you. That's what Paul is saying. I want your heart be lightened. I want the we, your capacity opened up in the Lord, the able to process things differently. <coughs> Water is a good for the one dying in the desert. But when you see it in the face, you don't want to drink plain water. You want some wine to entertain your guests. Now, life is not always a happy time. There are very solemn occasions to enable somebody, to stand somebody for responsibility in honor and entrust me. I need the oil to be poured on that one, to declare the whole world this one is ready to discharge holy responsibilities. Now, me, do you know the difference? A blessed one, but capable to receive the oil and minister oil. So apply some oil on your heart today. Not the water, because you're thirsty. Not the wine, because you want a good time with the Lord even. But 
assume a responsibility. We're different cause of a human being. Be a son of God. Be a servant of the Most High. Require some seriously quest. Is it not easy things or cheap things, random things, casual things? God designed for you to seek it with a faith and a heart, with a remnant, a determination. Once you receive it, don't treat cheaply. Don't let anybody despise it. It's a pearl of great price. It's a diadem on your head. And God pleased with it. God valued it. Who cares what the man has to say? And when you have that confidence, that awareness in you, you are free, more than free. More than free. You are able in the Lord. You don't bother by small arguments, small contentions, small desires. The scripture said, the righteous is bold like a lion. He has nothing to fear. He has nothing to worry. He has nothing to contend for. He is on the receiving. Not bad stuff, by the way. On the receiving the blessings of the Lord. Doesn't make life easy, even happy, but make life worthwhile. <coughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Go ahead. May the Lord open your spiritual eyes. Father, we do just lift up Naomi to you this morning, Father. And just thank you, Lord, for um, the higher calling that you have for her, Father, for um, the desire that you have to speak to her heart, Lord. We do ask, Father, for um, this gift, Lord, that the Spirit would open the eyes of her heart and her mind, Lord, mm -hmm. um, that she would indeed be baptized by your Spirit, Father, mm -hmm. to open a new realm of walking and living and thinking and um, direction in life, Father. Mm -hmm. So we ask for this for her this morning, Father. In mm. Jesus' name. Amen. In the spirit I see, you're poised to change. You're longing for change. Do you close your eyes continually, Naomi? Let me read the scripture for you. For all of us. I pray God will open up the vision and gift to you. Spend some quality time with the Lord. Quiet. Drop everything. Especially in the desires, concerns, troubles. Wait on the Lord. Let Him speak to you. The God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom in the revelation, in the knowledge of Him. I pray that the eyes of your heart, as doors, open windows, that will eyes the horse, like a horse. Eyes, a horse, doors. May be enlightened. Have you seen a dark room? The dawn of the day, you open the curtain, suddenly the sunlight is pouring. And you're not talking about the feeling, a sense of overwhelming sense, sensual awareness. You're talking about the spirit of wisdom, like that light. Spirit revelation like that light. The door is open now. <laughs> the capacity is open. You can shut it out if you want to. You can stop it. Amen? The window's open. Can you stop the light coming in? <laughs> you can't. So be chosen of the day. How you be chosen of the day? You walk in the light. So that you will know what the hope is calling, what are the riches of glory of his inheritance, the sense, spiritual inheritance, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us. Again, a different kind of power. That's what we call the inner man, the inner power towards us who believe. And with 
That power is the strength of God, with the working strength is mind, is mind. That power, mind, power mind, different in Paul's idea. Interesting, huh? We're talking about the same thing in the same right? So, Roman. It was differentiated also in Isaiah. So Paul was quoting Isaiah intuitively here. Amen? Spirit strength, or mind, or spirit power. Different, okay? So, now with that being said, may the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Okay, now you close your eyes as well. So, hallelujah. hallelujah. You all can come to a sober state of mind as you quest the Lord. It be uncomfortable, even not natural because you're young. You know, you know everything is about have no no things <laughs> exciting things. But the Lord is a, can can be sober. Am I? He wants us to be quiet. The wheat of the Lord. You wheat the Lord in a quiet place. Your mind, your heart, is quieted. I remember, you often pray. Your soul is quieted. Your soul stop dominating, dictating, stir things up, rather being subdued, subdued. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus, I just pray for all uh, the young ones here as we move on. Next time, talk about Jesus' baptism. I'm going to talk about more. But I want you guys to understand the baptism of Jesus. It's a different kind of baptism. And you can't understand scripture until you're baptized in the wisdom of the Lord. I mean, the spirit and attitude. The tragedy and the great disservice teachers of the Bible have those who never depends, not seldom depends on the attitude of the Holy Spirit to teach the Bible. They impart a system, teachings, good points, they, they garner some agreement, and give a set of understanding that is absolutely right and good and helpful. But they're not able to add to the living faith, the living works of the Holy Spirit to reveal, verify, establish us in truth. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you don't want to learn the Bible in such a way. Once you did that, you will think learn the Bible with intellectual impartation is the only way. Then you apply that understanding, say, I'm going to do something about my life now because I believe God tell me to do this, do that. Without truly the unction and the guidance and the grace of the Spirit. That's different than the real teaching of the Holy Spirit through conviction, through repentance, so real reformation and transformation of the mind and the heart. Hallelujah. I do pray that you will receive a different caliber, different way of being taught and receiving wisdom, the Lord, as we begin to expand the scriptures. We then, uh, I want Esther to ramp it up for today. So go ahead, Esther. Father, thank you for this time. That we get to come together and read in your word. Father, I pray that our hearts and minds would be open to receive wisdom that you give. Mm -hmm. I pray that we would have understanding of you mm -hmm. and that we would be willing to open our ears to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you would continue to work through each life mm -hmm. and build us closer to you, Father. Mm -hmm. I pray that you would be with us throughout the rest of this day. Hmm. I pray these things in your name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.